Yes, Jerry? I have a fault on Omicron 4. I checked out the reception circuits and they're nominal, so the fault's on the satellite. Would you let Tom Hill know? He said the reception for those Russian VIPs. Do you want me to call him? Oh, all right for some. No, get a message to him when you can. When he comes out will do, if he's still sober. But, General Jenkins, the duplication that goes on up here is idiotic and wasteful. Pooling our resources, only sensible thing. The Soviet and Euro governments decide which projects each will undertake. But acting on our recommendations. Well, I am willing to raise the matter at our next conference. Well, if you'd like to add that the idea has already been discussed by the Eurospace Assembly, who feel it's well worth following up, please do. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Dmitry Pavlovich, пожалуйста, походите сюда. You will excuse the interruption, Dr. Smith. It was good of you to spare the Colonel for so long. <laughs> Professor Calder, may I introduce Colonel Dmitry Pavlovich Gararov? My honor to meet you, sir. Believe me, Colonel, the pleasure is mine. Uh, may I introduce Tom Hill? At last I meet you, Tom. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest cosmonaut in the world, this man. No, Dimitri, that honor's yours. When I was training as a cosmonaut, the walls of my room were covered in photographs of Tom Hill. And in class, when we were given problems to solve, I would always ask myself, in this situation, what would Tom Hill do? Have a drink. <laughs> Sir. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Dimitri. Hello. Thank you, Sandy. Tom? Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, Dick. To you, Dimitri, and the success of Mosakai. Oh, yes. Mosakai. Mosakai. Come with me, Tom. Oh, ten years ago, I'd have grabbed my toothbrush. <laughs> oh, today also. You agree, Comrade Director? Hill and Gararov. Gararov and Hill. The Custer and Borgs of Space. Oh, I'm sorry, Colonel. I can't spare our twin for a couple of years. I doubt whether my wife would be very happy about it either. No. When's the launch date? Tomorrow week. T oh, soon? Yeah. May I uh, ask the plan? You'll excuse me. Excuse me. Thank you. We are five of us as a crew. We travel in a Mars 1. Mars 2 and 3 are the laboratories. No one is above them. Uh, and you're controlling them from one? Yes. At planetary encounter, one, two, and three will link up to form the orbital station. Then we assemble Mars Sokaya and take it down to the surface of Mars. As simple as that? Yes. How long are you going to stay there? Three months. Then we return to the station and take the ferry, ferry back here. That's quite a trip. Yes, ten years of preparation, so for Dmitry Pavlovich, three years of simulation. Mm. That, uh, that triple docking must be fun. The first manoeuvre, docking one into two, Oh, it's normal. <clears throat> but then you've got to take the combined vehicle and dock it into three. Uh, and the feel of the power required, everything's different. Yes. Comrade Director would like me to stay in bed until that moment. Sure of course, sure. the success of the entire project depends on it. Get yourself hurt before then and... But what will Marsakai have cost when they get back? One hundred thousand million euro dollars. But of course we shall have Marsokai on the orbital station in place. Oh, of course, yes. Excuse me. Oh. Uh, communications asked me to pass on a message. Omicron 4 has ceased transmission. Oh, no. Oh, not again. Well, Dimitri, looks like I may have a ride after all. Oh, Omicron's a weather satellite we maintain. Where is it? Oh, it's just down the road, about 37,000 kilometers above the Earth. Want to come along? Yes! Yet! <laughs> <laughs> Dead as the proverbial. And no wonder it's been on station for the best part of eight years. It's just held together by sticky tape and chewing gum. Mm -hmm. Got plenty of that in stores. Right. Yeah, well, the truth is, Omicron 4 has just about had its day. Oh, Tom. <laughs> You know the situation we're in. The Director General's demanding results. Then what have we given him so far? Laubertel, the other two boys killed, partners of fake Conway's suicide, and a shelled radio astronomy project. Now, let's not have to tell him that something else is up the spout. All right. I'll try and fix Omicron. Well, there's no need for you to go. I mean, send one of the others with a technician. Oh, no. Talking to Dimitri's giving me a hankering. I'll go. Save your technician's time. All right. Very good. Could you get me a flight, please? <clears throat> We've got a nerve, you know. Huh? Proposing joint operations with the Russians with hardly two euro dollars to our name. Uh, but get them to participate just once in any project. 
And I'll shame better appropriations for us from the assembly. By demonstrating just how much of a poor relation we are. Right. Yeah, but Master Collier will prove that point soon enough. Apart from a congratulatory telegram to the Kremlin, it'll be ignored. What's a guy? You can't ignore it. You can if you're not financially involved, but get the assembly on a hook. Uh, that's something else again. Involving pride? Yes, which in turn involves face saving when we turn on the screws. Oh, you've got it all worked out, haven't you? I lie in my bed at night scheming. But success depends on Moonbase functioning, no matter how little money's available. So, get Omicron working again, Tom. Comrade Director Trenkin's no match for you. I can see that. It's just that I question David's ability to contain Trenkin. Keep him in line. Why? Well, David's basically a research scientist, not an administrator, which Trenkin is. You feel the administration here is not all it should be? I'm afraid so. Others could do better? Yes. A professional administrator, like Trenkin. So. In any joint operations, you see the Russians putting us down. Ah, uh, now, you know that I esteem David highly. But let me pose you a question. Could you have taken Master Kaya from its inception and brought it to this moment? Possibly not. <laughs> there you are, then. He'd have been bored ages ago. And such a project is not possible. You and Trenkin are intrigued by the grand design. But not David. For him, it's the component part. Well, they concern me also. But subordinate to the overall scheme. Of course. For David, it's the reverse. Well, he has to compromise what he wants to achieve all the time. Oh, Michel, some of the time. You think that makes one the better administrator? Perhaps not. I think it's just making additional problems for oneself. Well, I won't deny that. A project like Masokaya has problems enough as it is. No, Doctor. The grand design must be the administrator's first concern. Always. Engine gimbal set to zero inclination and locked. EDS checks complete. Updates are in. The computer's yours. We have the computer. Program zero, zero and accept. Disk is in verb 40. Final liftoff pad, Tom. Ready to copy. Bus A and B on. Refs mat zero, zero, three, one, five, one, zero, 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 <coughs> minus five, plus two, three. Okay. Yes, Engine minus. override arm off. Time base six, all zeros. Hypergolics nine, eight, nine, nine. Pressures are nominal. On my mark, minus 20. Mark. Mark 20. Bus A and B on. Refs mat zero, zero, three, one, five, one, zero, zero, zero. Minus five plus twenty-three. Engine override arm off. Time base six all zeros. Hypergolics ninety-eight ninety-nine. Pressures are nominal. Have a good ride, Tom. Thanks, David. Stand by for internal power and hypergolic disconnect. Three, two, one, mark. All systems nominal, Tom. Copy. Lift off minus five. On my mark. Mark. Four. Four. Ignition. Ignition. Two. two. One. Lift off. You have lift off. Plus five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Radar lock on. You're looking good. Is all systems continuing nominal, Tom? Looks good from here as well. Moon orbit insertion at plus seven zero three zero five. Confirm. Plus twenty. You're looking good. Went well. Aye, no problems. You lock Kai has been in touch with communications. What can we do for Comrade Trenkin? He wants you to have dinner with him. 30 seconds international mm. system. Tomorrow. Hear that, Tom? You'll have to watch your step then, won't he? Cigar? Uh, no, thank you. These areas of cooperation. Which do you propose? In all the moon studies, uh, cosmic radiology, radio astronomy and the Earth satellites, uh, solar flare study... The local projects. Well, at the moment, we have no plans for further deep space probes. We have. Oh? Hmm. Based on the findings of the American Sputnik released in 78. Grand tour? The Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus... Only the first and... leg is of interest to us. When Marsoka is on station, we shall use it as a springboard to Jupiter. Manned flight? Yes, orbital. Are you inviting us to participate? Would you be interested? On what basis? Shared costs? Estimated at? 
total seven hundred million dollars. That's three hundred fifty million each. <laughs> Cheap for you. We've already paid for Marsukaya. And how about letting the Americans in as well? Troika in space. No. If your assembly declines, we shall go to the Americans. If the Americans decline, we'll go to Jupiter alone. I'll, um, I'll put the feelers out. The crossing from Mars to Jupiter will require men of courage, capable of controlling the ship in the proton storms. There's the voyage for a cast and pulks. The old devil. Hey, uh, Tom, he sat there with this smirk on his face, talking 350 millions apiece. Yeah, knowing damn well we can't afford it. I'm hinting broadly, if it's not us, it'll be the Yanks. Have you spoken to the Director General yet? No. Can you imagine his reaction when David says he wants an extra 350 million? <laughs> you don't see what's so funny about that. What are you going to do about it? String check it along. Play for time. Do you really think there's a hope in hell of us ever getting that money? Yes. <laughs> don't ask me how, it's a hunch. But ask at the right time and we'll get it. It'll be a fantastic trip for somebody. Taking a craft for the proton winds. They knocked Grand Tour about a bit. Yeah, I know, but he only weighed about 500 kilos. It was like a dinghy in a gale. Master Kyle must be at least whew, 20 times heavier. Like a small yacht in the same gale. Yeah, well, you let the astronauts worry about that. You just concentrate on getting the money. Yeah. Well, after some sleep. Are you going to be around for docking tomorrow? Oh, of course. Any problem so far? No, I got a caution and warning on my EVA hatch a while back, but oh. it, oh, no, it's cleared itself, though. Oh, fine. Night then, Tom. Pleasant dreams. I'll let you analyze them in the morning. Good night. Good night. Flight, I have Omicron 4 on scan, range 1,000 oh, meters now, plus. You. you have acquisition. Uh, firm acquisition, Tom. So we have it on the screen here. You're giving us a clear image. He can go manual now if he wants. Right. Tom, we'll release you to manual flight control when you're ready. Fine, Ra. Ready when you are. Copy. Releasing you to manual control with computer override on my mark. Mark. Copy manual control. All systems nominal. Copy, Tom. Five. Omicron bears red zero zero five at three thousand one hundred and ten meters, accelerating to close at thirty meters per second. Estimate Omicron at one oh three point six seconds, braking procedure and terminal phase at ninety seconds. Thirty meters per second to close. Time lapse one hundred and three point six. Braking station Morning. keep at ninety. Repeater readout confirms. Which of the docking bays are you going for, Tom? Left or right? I'll go left, Ra. Copy, Tom. Forty range now one thousand nine hundred meters. Bearing constant on red zero zero five. Morning, Tom. Sleep well? Yeah, fine, thanks. How were the dreams? Oh, I made a sensational discovery. In 50 oh. years, yes. now Columbus was a Russian. <laughs> <laughs> how, how did you find that out? Well, because I was there to meet him when he stepped ashore in San Salvador. Oh, yeah. We'll discuss that one when you return. <laughs> In 60 years, now 1,300 meters, bearing continuous constant on red 005. 30 seconds to deceleration, Mark. Mark 30. You're right on the money, Tom. Just hang her in like that. He should be doing better things than mending sync on satellites. Keep your fingers crossed for Jupiter. He'll train the crew. Oh, Michel thinks that our people in Brussels lack the imagination for such a design. Oh, I'm not so sure. They built Moon Base 3, launched the Venus probe. I might convince them yet. Ten seconds to deceleration. No. From my mark. Mark. Mark 10, 9, nine 8, eight seven, 7, 6, 5, five 4, four three, 3, 2, two one. 1. Decelerate.
Moving lateral left. I have a problem. Full power surge. On manual? Negative. Then give me a reader. Uh, Tom, affirm your heart, docs. Yeah, the gas permanently and pitching. Correct it. I can't. The helium pressure's all the way down. Zero, zero point two. Nothing. Tom, David, give us a few minutes to work on this one. Yeah, sure, David. And check your docking latches. Copy that. Deceleration. Lateral left manoeuvre. Here it is, a transient. Transient? A ghost signal on Tom's computer. Yes, well, they happen sometimes. We just don't know why. An electronic impulse is set up which gives a, a rogue command. And this one fired full power? What's maximum velocity in the apogolics? 158,400 metres per second. And the combined load? 10 tonnes, 8 for Omicron, 2 for the craft. Full power was 1.19 seconds. 0.19 would have been enough. To do what? push Tom out of Earth orbit into deep space. Flight. Copy, Tom. Cold is still there. Here, Tom. David, I'm jammed down. I can't open them. What about your EVA hatch? Yeah, you remember that caution and warning? Yes. It's back. The hatch is jammed, too. So it looks like I'm stuck in this tin can. The way I see it, I get to meet Garan off to Mars. <laughs> no, not on, Tom. I need you to train the Jupiter crew. Yeah, well, that'll have to wait till I get back from my private grant tour. Well, I'm sorry, it can't. Now, we'll work something out. I'll come back to you later. Stay on calm with him. All the time, this boss. I'll be in my office. Flight. Flight. Radio, Tom. I'm cutting down on all non-essentials. That includes the TV transmission. It eats up too much juice. Copy, Tom. He's moving away from us at the rate of 12,000 kilometers an hour. And does his trajectory give us an intercept? Lift off in 12 hours. Interception at 718,400 kilometers. A full power ride? Yeah. Then he's lost. Why do you say that? Well, the only craft we have is service of four, similar to Tom's. Hmm? Its maximum capacity to a given point and back with maneuvers is one and a half million kilometers. Which gives us a 31,000 kilometer overlap. Theoretically. All right, then have it, say, 16,000 kilometers. At an escape speed of 12,000. That's, that's just over an hour to dock, rescue Tom, and start the flight home. It can't be done. Calder. Yes, sir? I want uh, service of four on the pad, please. Maximum range state, and I want her ready for liftoff in 12 hours. Very well, sir. Uh, who's crewing her, sir? I'll let you know. Right, sir. We would all like to see Tom saved. I do not believe it's possible. You've got the next 12 hours to convince me. But to begin with, he cannot open the docking latches. His EVA hatch is jammed. He is trapped inside the ship. There must be something he can do. Repair the hatches or free the latch. It's not practical. Look, when something goes wrong here, who do we scream for? Well, here there are workshops and equipment. There he has practically nothing in less than 12 hours. More than that, Michel. Well, that's the time of your proposed liftoff. The journey will take at least another 40 hours. You will launch without being certain you can leave the craft? Of course. So, next difficulty. The craft and satellite are pitching. I know that. 
Well, do you know what to ask of a rescuer? That to lock onto Omicron, he must station keep with meticulous accuracy. Well, who do we have here capable of such a maneuver? Bertoli, Hoffman, Fraser? I'll speak to Bill Jackson. The Americans will help. And not with all their tough astronauts engaged testing their new proton engine. You cannot send any of our people. You'd be demanding of them more than you have a right to ask. There'll be no orders. It'll be a matter of volunteering. But the ultimate responsibility rests with you. Naturally. The possibility of failure is too high. That's the risk I run. Well, suppose your would-be rescuer gets a hang-up on docking and joins Tom on that journey to deep space. Do you appreciate the damage it would do to the entire moon base project? I would try to minimize it. Oh, why even chance it? Because Tom's situation is still recoverable. On paper. The irony of the situation is that the one man who would effect such a rescue is in fact the victim. No. There's one other. Colonel Dmitry Gararov. Do you believe Trenkin will let him go? If we're sufficiently persuasive. Remember, he liked Gerardo to stay in bed and keep out of harm's way. There's no risk involved. Tom, she was pitching. For a man of Gerardo's experience, docking would be about as difficult as opening a door. But Trenkin's got the decision. Yes. No. For a man like Gerardo, no. The training he's had, the... Marsokaya link up? Your spacecraft, he doesn't know. It's a two day ride. It'll give him time to get the feel of her. Yet. Gararov would want to go. Gararov does not command. You want us to work with you on the Jupiter shot? Yes. Then work with us now. Put yourself in my place. What you ask is impossible. On Gararov depends the success of Marsokaya, and that cannot be jeopardized for one man's life. Don't you have confidence in Gerardo's ability to save Tom? Of course I do. But it is a risk I, I can't afford to take. Nor have I the authority to let him go. For that I would need the approval of the Kremlin. And that you would not receive in the time necessary to save your Mr. Hill. There's some movement on the top latches, row. The rest are solid. Not to worry, Tom. Calder's organizing a rescue. <laughs> He'll be lucky. I'm shutting down on all non-essentials again. Just conserve your energy, Tom. Like the ships you may need it later. to go. A couple of hours. A bit more. Yeah, they've had service of four on the pad for over an hour. Rao, do you think Tom's had it? Well, the last time anything like this happened was the old director, Ransom. If you were in Trenkin's shoes, wouldn't you do the same? I know I would. Visual? No, sir. Put it through to here, please. Switching, sir. Yes, Tom? I've been thinking. Ross says you're planning a rescue. That's right. Well, uh, I don't know what you have in mind, David, but just forget it. But there's still time to reach you, Tom. No, there's no way of prizing these sardine cans apart. Have you found the cause of the jamming? Yeah, well, there was a play in one of the engine gimbal locks. 
Not much, but it was enough to wedge me in out of alignment. Short of straightening me up from the outside with the sledgehammer, David, there's nothing you can do. But if that's the only way to do it, Tom, that's what we'll do. No, David. There's no point in trying. I've accepted that. It was an accident. But if service... Hey, it happened. I wish it hadn't. <laughs> Hazard of the trade. But I'm okay about it, really. Uh, and listen, David. Hmm? I mean, if you do make a rescue bid and it goes badly wrong, you know that's going to leave you pretty short on hardware at Moonbase. Oh, to hell I had a lot that. of explaining to do at Brussels. No, as I said, David, I'm... I'm okay about it. I'll come back to you, Tom. Copy, David. How long have we got? Two hours, five minutes. Tom is right, David. You must face it. I can't. It's as simple as that. I can't. Even though he's told you he's trapped inside the ship? The latches won't open from Tom's side. They might from the satellite. Well, a rescuer would need to open them. As well as docking against the pitching satellite, helping Tom out and backing away, all in the space of one hour. It's a physical impossibility. How do you know that? Nobody's trying. And when they do try and fail, when another life and another ship has been sacrificed... What are you really worried about, Michelle? Tom's life or balancing the books? Oh. Come in. I was hoping you'd come. I hear Tom is in trouble. Yes, Colonel, he is. I will go and fetch him. And Maso Kaya? It won't go without me. You'll be back in plenty of time for the launch. Patch me into Tom Hill's circuit. Right away, sir. Tom? Yes, David. Someone to speak to you. Dimitri, I am coming to fetch you. Does Trenkin know? We'll discuss the difficulties during the voyage. Work out our plan. <laughs> Does the comrade director know? I am here, Tom. And he is in Lunokaya. <laughs> Engine gimbal set to zero inclination. Locked. EDS checks complete. Updates are in the computer's yours, Colonel. When will you notify Russell? the computer. Immediately after he's Program taken off. Zero, zero, oh, and hell will break loose. Yes, yes I know. Four, zero. Good luck, Colonel. Thank you, sir. And my regards to Comrade Trankin. Stand by for internal power and hyperbolic disconnect. Three, two, one, mark. All systems nominal, Colonel. I copy. Lift off minus five. On my mark. Mark. Four. Four. Ignition. ignition. Two. One. one. Lift off. You have lift off, Colonel. All systems continuing nominal, Colonel. Nominal from here also. Moon orbit insertion at plus eight, four, three, zero, five. Yes. He's on his way, Tom. Recall him. That's impossible. Remember. I refuse your permission to use him. Officially, which I understood, but he volunteered. That makes no difference. Well, I misunderstood. I took it as a tacit agreement on your part. Would I do that? Having explained to you the immense importance of Gararov to the success of Marsokaya? You also expressed your confidence in his ability to save Tom. Now, it never occurred to me that he was volunteering without your knowledge. This matter will be dealt with at the very highest level. Our assembly is aware of what's happening. Your government as well, I trust. Mm -hmm. And my government will be discussing it with them. Amicably, I'm sure. As there could be no doubt about the outcome. Although, naturally, I do accept full responsibility. When I reach you, Tom, I go outside and inspect the jamming here. Yeah? yeah, fine. But how are you going to shift it? What ideas have you had? Uh, good belt on the side with a sledgehammer. And if I were to nudge you? <laughs> you just push me away. But oh, wait, though. What about the satellite stabilizer jets? We must use them. Yeah, they're not very powerful, but, well, they could stop you pushing me away. I mean, you know, make that nudge more effective. With the pitching, their effective help will be diminished. Yeah, I'll give it a squirt now, see if I can feel it. Clyde. Yes, we heard you, Tom. Uh, latitudinally or longitudinally? 
you choose. See if I can tell which one it was. Copy. The standby. On my mark. Mark. Lateral right. On the button, Tom. Hey, Dimitri. This idea could work. Marvelous. Work out exactly where I must strike, Tom. Van and velocity. Okay, I'll do my homework. What do they think they're in? Dodge and cars? <laughs> you have risked all of this. All of us on the off chance that Tom Hill can be saved. I don't understand. Mine's nothing to the gamble Gararov's taken. Well, him too. It's just not logical. Frequently, friendship isn't. Calder? Communication centre, sir. Director General Brussels on Channel 74. Scrambler? Uh, very good. Good afternoon, sir. Oh, Calder. Summon your deputy, would you please? Dr. Lebrun is here. Good. Put him on, will you? Yes, sir. As from this moment, Lebrun, you are in command of Moon Base 3. Under no circumstances is called her to play any further role in this rescue attempt. No, that's damned unfair on Lebrun. Let me finish what I started. At least if it goes wrong, it's just my neck. Now you're making it his as well. I'm sorry, but the Russians insist that you have nothing more to do with it. I I'm don't... fully prepared to accept the responsibility, sir. Good, Lebrun. Let me talk to Calder again, would you please? Yes. David, why in heaven's name did you do it? One, I like him. Two, you need him here. And three, Gararov can save him. And will. You better be right. Anyway, it's out of your hands now. I'm relying on Lebrun to salvage what he can. Come in. I've just been listening to Tom and Dimitri talking to each other. Yes, what's the latest? Well, Dimitri's going to do a spacewalk to inspect the jamming, then they're going to try and correct the alignment with a controlled collision. The what? Well, how? By using Omicron stabilizer jets to stop the swing away on impact. Equal and opposite. Wow, that's ingenious. It's insanity. I shall stop them. You? Oh, I've been relieved. He's in command. Gararov may approach the satellite and do his spacewalk, but there will be no collision. sent up here as director. I was scared. Obscure academic. <laughs> Odd job boy for the government. And what qualifications were they for a job like this? And Michelle was already here. The complete space age technocrat. Then there was Tom Hill. As at home in space as a fish in the sea. But after a while, I began to understand why I was appointed instead. You see, Tom's role here is to keep us alive and functioning in a totally alien environment. Michel, uh, he organizes our efforts so that our strength isn't wasted. It would be unfair to ask them to fight our fights as well. Now, that's how I've always seen myself up here, you see. As a buffer. You know, a go-between. It's not Michel's idea of a good administrator. <laughs> Obviously not. He prefers Trenkin style. Oh. What do you think would happen tomorrow? That's one hell of a question to ask. Oh, I didn't mean Dimitri and Tom. I was talking about you. Me? A quiet little research lab on a tracking station in the Western Isles. 
I doubt that. Oh, my dear lady. I'm for the chop. No mistake about that. I don't mind. What I did was right. That's what matters. vehicle at six kilometers, you confirm? Done. Flight, you're receiving a picture of me from Dimitri's ship. Copy that, Tom. Affirm. Well, feed it to me, please, will you? What's your fuel cell state, Tom? Well, I'm okay on receive for a while. Wouldn't want to transmit them. Dimitri, you're closing target at velocity 62 meters per second, time there in 100 seconds. Deceleration in 60 seconds. On my mark, mark. Mark 60. Do you have your picture, Tom? Yeah, I have a good picture. Hey, I can see the pitch. <laughs> Glad I won't have to look at it for long. I'll be seasick. Deceleration in 50 seconds. What do you think, Dimitri? Interesting, Tom. Should be fun. <laughs> 40 seconds to deceleration. I'd like to speak to Colonel Gararov. Trenkin? It is vital. I'll speak to him, sir. You're now in charge. Yes. I must speak to Colonel Gonarov. 30 seconds to deceleration. Mark. Uh, very well, briefly. Товарищ полковник, я вам приказываю в имени советского правительства... In English, please, sir. All communications must be in English. Break away, Colonel. The collision maneuver is too dangerous. Break away. 20 seconds to deceleration. Mark. Commander Director, you command in Lunokaya, I command here. First, I go outside and look. If I can breathe the charming, good. If not, we are going ahead with the collision. Ten seconds to deceleration. Mark. Nine. Nine. Eight. That's it, then. Seven, no one can stop them. Six, well, the Bronx can still stop the collision. Four, three, two, one. Decelerate. Dimitri, as you stabilize, we'll lock you in on our computer here. I copy. 30 seconds to target. Mark 30. When do you want to switch to manual, Dimitri? At 10 seconds to target. Copy. 20 seconds to target. Mark. Your mean should be about 50 meters off target. I copy. 10 seconds to target. Mark. You have control, Nine, Dimitri. Eight, Thank you. 8, 7, 6, six 5, five four, three, three, 2, one. 1. Over target. You see, he, he's got the craft at a fixed distance from the satellite, which is... What he has to do now is to roll at the same speed hmm? and relative to one another. They're stationary. Plus 18, plus 30, plus 40, plus 40, plus 20, plus 12, plus 2, plus 6, plus 10, plus 4, plus 3, plus 2, plus 1, 0, plus 1. Zero. Zero. Look on roll, please. Roll locked on. Zero. Okay, Tom. Fine, Dimitri. Good. Now I come out and take a look. Maybe there is an easier way to get you out of your tinker. <laughs> oh, I doubt it. But you're welcome to try. I'm just about to come across. Always pleased to see company, Dimitri.
my way over to you now. just arrived on the hull. Do you hear me? Loud and clear. Don't kick a hole in it. Taking a look at the docking port now. Since I am here, I will also examine the other side. Don't think you'll get much joy. Nothing much I can do from here. I shall return to my ship. Stop them! So first, I must position myself. I will approach you laterally in the plane of pitching. Okay? Fine, Dimitri. I'm not going anywhere. Station. My jet pulse will be full power, such as it is. You give the command, Tom. No, no, I forbid it. The craft, America. 
They were both killed. For Hill, that has been inevitable since the accident. But for Garar to die like this, it's waste. It's a murderous criminal waste. Flight, let me know when you're ready to fire. Dr. Lebrun. If we don't fire the satellite stabilizer motors, what will happen? Well, the collision will simply push Tom's ship to one side. To be effective, the push must be resisted. Flight, did you get that? You have the final control from here. Yes, the satellite's jets. If the firing button is pressed, you will tie up a research project that has taken us years and has cost us 100,000 million dollars. Possibly. And around your ears, as well as corners, will arrange an international political scandal. You have the chance to call it off. Flight, are you reading me? Pass the word. Far when ready. Durak. When you're ready, Tom. Right. Fire on my mark. Mark. Separation. What's this? Only the best bubbly for this occasion. Call down. Brussels on channel 74. No scrambler. Oh, very good. The Director General. <laughs> Sir. Ah, Calder. Magnificent. Congratulations to everyone concerned. The Russians are particularly delighted. Eve of Masakaya, all that publicity. There's some possibility of a cooperation on some future project. Paolo Lechia is off to Moscow next week for preliminary discussions. Lechia? Well, I'm delighted to hear that, sir. Yes, David, you can be very proud of your team. Uh, you mean Lebrun's team? No, no, no. Executing your decisions. Mm. The Assembly should have known better than to think that a change of command would automatically bring about a shift in direction. I told them so. Your team has one essential quality, I said, loyalty. Unless a man that Lebrun might have panicked and made an alternative decision. And that might not have gone down so well for us here. <laughs> anyway, congratulations to you all. Thank you, sir. Bye, David. Goodbye, sir. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Alexis? Yes. And the grand design? Now, what could I do? Gararov refused to break away. Regardless of Trenkin, he was determined to try. His only chance of success was that I support him. A matter of logic? Well, yes. They are there, my director. Castor and Pollux. Mm they ever fly together again. I wouldn't be at all surprised. Does that all you? Hmm? Uh, Yechida? <laughs> <laughs>